Well, I have a coin here. It's a portrait coin of Julius Caesar from the month before he got assassinated. OK. This coin is really interesting. Yeah, this is cool. Yes, I think I was actually Caesar in a different lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming into the shop today because I have a portrait Julius Caesar coin that I want to sell. I believe it's a key piece to any historical coin collection. I'm hoping to sell it for 4400 but I absolutely love it, so I'm not going to take any low ball offer for it. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, you have Caesar Dictator. One of the neat things is, is where it says dictator on the front of it. Uh, that's a negative term nowadays. But back then, it wasn't. During times of war, they would, they would assign a person the title dictator. Mm -hmm. And a dictator had to, would do what was necessary to preserve the republic. OK, and no matter what he did in office, he could not be prosecuted for that when he left office. Cool. When he was assassinated, everyone said he was a tyrant, which was different. Yeah. It was legal to assassinate a tyrant that was tyrannicide. But once Brutus and all of his buddies killed him on the Senate floor, they seemed to realize if we say it's tyrannicide where we killed a tyrant, we're screwed because everything he did when he was in office is now null and void. But if he wasn't a tyrant, then it was murder. So they basically came along and says, he wasn't a tyrant, and we didn't murder him. <laughs> After Julius Caesar was assassinated, there was a real power vacuum in Rome. And it wasn't until Octavius that basically straightened everything out. The great thing about this is it's a 2,000-year-old coin with Caesar's face on it. And I want it. So are you looking to sell it? Yeah. OK. How much were you looking to get out of it? I want 4,400, please. OK. Um, there's, there's a million variables, especially with ancient coins. And quite frankly, I don't know enough. I don't know if that's a good price or not. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? Sure, please. All right, I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm really excited that an expert is coming in to attest to its authenticity. This is one of these historical personalities that made Western civilization the way it is today. This is the coin. OK. Julius Caesar. A few names in history ring with the familiarity of Julius Caesar. You know, there's Napoleon, you know, a few other people you can throw in. His murder inspired Shakespeare. Yeah. I mean, this is a serious bit of history. This particular coin was struck within 30 days prior to Julius Caesar's murder. Many historians believe that the fact that his portrait appeared on a coin was one of the things that led to his murder. So is it real? Do you mind if I take it out and look at it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, examine okay. it. The strike is perfect. The style is correct. Everything is right. OK. It's perfectly genuine. All right. So what do you think it's worth? Um, when you get a coin like this, there's no shortage of buyers. When they are in fantastic condition, the very best of these have brought in the neighborhood of $200,000 each. OK. But there's a, a good amount of wear. It's circulated. And I think this is worth in a neighborhood of $1,500. Retail? Retail. OK. To me, it seems almost uh, ridiculous that somebody would sell it that low, especially when they knew its history. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm basing it what I'm on, on what I've seen them sell for yeah, in, in auctions in Europe and the United States. But uh, the decision is yours. Thanks for coming in, man. All right, man. Thanks. Uh, one last question. Uh, where, where can I get these for such low prices? I understand why the seller is not happy with that. You know, the fact is, these things are undervalued. And uh, it's probably best that he holds on to it, because the bottom line is it's difficult to replace for less than its current market value. Dave, he's been in the coin business his entire life. And I'm going to take his opinion. You know, I, I'd give you a 1000 bucks for the coin. <laughs> Is this a real offer, or? That's, that's a legitimate offer, yeah. Mm, that's not a legitimate offer. You're just using your position here, trying to buy something for below its market value. The way market value is determined is if two people agree on a price. If you don't like my price, you don't have to take How it. How about 4000 No, there's no money to be made. 
I have final offer for you, 3,500. And I'll take cash, $100 bills. I guess we're not gonna make a deal, man. Okay. You're lost, my friend. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, have a nice one. The offer of $1,000 is absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna hold on to the coin and I'm gonna try to sell it to someone else that could actually appreciate its true historical value. What do we got here? You've got my sword collection, Roman, that is. Okay, where did you get them? Through my father, from his father. Okay, because you don't look old enough to get these when they were new, so. <laughs> oh, no. no, I did not. I'm looking to sell my Roman Gladius sword. I also have two Puggio daggers. These are all from the Roman era, some earlier, some later. The overall condition is very good. It looks good, they're great display pieces, and these items are quite sentimental to me, and now I just keep them in a case and it's not the right thing to do. So, as being a history buff, I would like it to be on display, and I would like somebody to enjoy it. This is cool. 2,000 years ago, the Romans basically had the best armies because, um, well, first off, they were professional. When you joined the Roman army, you had to sign up for 25 years. Absolutely. Okay. And you're actually promised a pension at the end of that. But your life expectancy at 18 was like 35. So very few people ever got their pension. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, I think they had close to a million troops. So they ruled the world. Okay, so this is a gladius, okay? Basically the perfect sword for the type of warfare they had. They figured out this was the perfect length, the perfect thickness, everything about it. The uh, Romans, they had their really large shields, and a big long sword wouldn't work because, you know, part of their fighting stance was to go over the shield, over the shield like that. And um, if you're a highly trained army with shields like that, long swords don't work. Um, this right here looks like a Puggio. That would be a small knife that uh, people would carry around. It was illegal to carry one of these in Rome. And the amazing thing is, I mean, the blade looks like it could be made out of steel. If it's real, it's a really nice one. And this right here, I have no idea. Um, it's an odd size, odd shape. Um, the lines down it right here don't look like they serve a purpose. They might be decorative. That I have no idea. Absolutely. OK. Um, now, the big question, how much you want for them? With the Puggio, I'm looking for 7,000 on this. I was looking for 3,000 on the sword, and I was looking at 2,000 on the, we're not sure what it is. OK, so I'm going to call my guy who um, can tell us if they're real. He can x-ray him. He can do everything on the mm -hmm. spot. So you don't mind hanging out? No, not at all. All right, I'll be right back. Fantastic. I can picture Chum fiddling as Rome burns. <laughs> what do we have today? Gladius, Puggio, something, something. Thing, thing. I have no idea if they're real, because I know there's a thousand fakes for every real one. Uh, close to that, <laughs> absolutely. Even though they made a million of these, there were a lot of fakes. So, yeah, we've got three different varieties. Of course, the Gladius. I mean, that is the go-to weapon of the Roman military. Everyone had one. This is a Republic era Pujo, so first century BC. This is the late era Pujo. So this started about second century AD to about fourth century. So this replaced this. Do you think they're real? We can find out. I'm gonna test this one first. So this is an XRF. It shoots a little beam of X-ray, tells me the metal composition. So as we see, we've got 98% iron, which it should be. The next number is magnesium. That shouldn't be there. Strike one. Strike one. So we try the gladius. OK, so now we're at 98.2% iron, and our magnesium is down to a half a percent. I'd like to see it a little bit lower than that, but with everything else that I'm seeing on this, I think this one's fine. OK, fantastic. And the Puggio. Yeah. Wow. Chromium, bad. Ugh. Magnesium, bad. Bad. Yeah. Just too many strange trace elements. So these two are fakes. What is the Gladius worth? I'd retail this at about 4,000. OK. So not a bad number. OK. Beautiful piece. You're the best. Thanks, man. OK. Rick, take care. Thank you. You bet.
Okay, so no on the Pugios. Okay. The Gladius. You're asking three thousand dollars for it. Sure. I'm thinking like more like eighteen hundred. To realize it's my only one that was real. I'm stuck with. Uh... <laughs> Rarely does someone walk in the shop and say, "Hey, do you have a Gladius?" I get it. I get it. What's your best price? Twenty-five. Twenty-one. Why don't you do twenty-two fifty? Call it a day. Let's just call it twenty-two hundred even. All right, you win. All right, sweet. I'll meet you right over there. We'll do some paperwork. I'll get you paid. Sounds good. Thank you. I'm so Gladius. I bought this. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? All right. What can I help you with? I brought something that I think would be pretty popular here in Vegas. It is a Roman erotic tessera. It's a brothel token from ancient Rome. I don't know why you would say we need this in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here today to sell my ancient Roman brothel token. I buy and sell coins, and I come across odd things like this, and I bought it because I thought it was a good value to resell it. Brothel tokens aren't something that I collect. <laughs> This is, you know, right around, you know, 1 AD. About the time of Christ, Tiberius Augustus, right about in there. Most people really don't think of Rome the way it really was. It was a really highly advanced society. Literally 2,000 years ago, they had sewer systems that weren't matched until the 20th century. And they actually had brothels, and the very large ones would have brothel coins. It was sure. um, basically the way the system was. Brothels had bars, all this other stuff. They had girls that worked upstairs. And if you wanted to go see one of the girls upstairs, you would literally go to the counter and you would pay your money. And when he went upstairs to see his girl, he would go to booth five. <laughs> Right. Um, and that way the girl would take the money and then they knew that there would be no accounting issues. It was a way to make sure that the girls didn't steal the money from management. So where'd you get it? <laughs> well, I've been dealing in foreign ancient coins most of my life and it's what I do for a living and I bought it off another dealer who acquired it in Europe. Did he have any background on it? Uh, no, but the depictions on it match up very closely to the frescoes that are on the walls of the brothel in Pompeii. Okay, um, how much do you want for this? I'd like to get around 10 grand for it. Okay. I don't know that exactly how many of these that have been copied. I'm sure they do copy them. Let me call in a guy who would be an expert on this. Expert in ancient coins, not brothels, or maybe okay. both, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna get his opinion on this, all right? Sure. Give me a few minutes and we'll go make a phone call. Okay. Note to wife, never had to use one of these, never been one of those places. I just read history books. <laughs> hey, Rick. Dave, how's it going? Good. So I explained to this person you're an expert on brothels. <laughs> I would know all about this. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yes. Um, Not suitable for children. Um. <laughs> I think it's brothel coin. He says it's a brothel coin. Well, it, it's certainly one explanation that these were used in brothels during the reign of Tiberius. It was illegal to use coins with an emperor's portrait on them while paying in a brothel. Okay. So, you know, it would be something you could use. In a brothel. Uh, in without... a brothel. Yeah, the depiction on the front of it is kind of self-explanatory. No inscription required. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> May I take a closer look at it? Yeah, go for it. It's actually a very interesting series. On the front, you have an erotic scene of some kind. Well, it's not some kind. It's pretty explanatory it's, what it is, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of several. There are at least a dozen scenes that are recorded. OK. And on the reverse, there's a letter in Roman numerals. And I believe they go through 1 through 16. OK. So. Is it real? A lot of counterfeits were made, but I took a good look. I think this is absolutely genuine. This is a good piece. OK, so what do these things go for? If it were lesser condition, sometimes you can be looking at $1,500 or $2,000. If they're the most magnificent ones in existence, you can be looking at $25,000, $30,000. This one's at the higher end of in between. Um, I think it's at least a $12,000 item. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you seven grand for it. I'd still like to get 10 grand for it. I mean, what, what's your best price on it? We do nine on it. I'll go eight grand. We have to admit it's a little odd and it's a little not exactly PC. Sure, sure, <laughs> I get it. Um, 
Hey, Grant's fine, man. All right, sweet. Um, I'll meet you right over there, and we'll do some paperwork. Okay, sounds good. I'm happy with the deal. I got more than what I paid for it, and uh, I've got uh, enough money to go buy a new toy for my collection. Hey, how can I help you? I have an ancient Roman military diploma. I, I love the Roman Empire. There's so many neat things to talk about. It was an amazing civilization, and it was in steep decline for like 100 years, and then really, really just sort of fell off a cliff in the 400s. It was a really, really dangerous thing being the emperor of Rome. Julius Caesar was assassinated. Sort of a political Game of Thrones back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here today to sell my ancient Roman military diploma. I'm a collector and dealer of Roman and Greek items from antiquity, and this is a piece that I picked up in my travels about two years ago. If I'm able to make a deal today, I'll probably use that money to buy another coin for my collection. Pretty cool. When you were in the Roman army, certain guys had their diplomas that they literally wore on their chest. And it was stitched into their fancy outfit. Day to day, they didn't wear it, but like if, when they dressed up, they would literally put their diploma there and it says, I'm such and such rank, I you know, this is the units I belong to, blah, 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 blah. These things were two pieces, right? Originally came as two pieces, yes. It was hand engraved, so it's nearly 1,800 years old, for a soldier by the name of Marcus Aurelius Valens who served in the Praetorian Guard, and the Praetorian Guard was an elite um, part of the army that basically served as bodyguards for the, the ruling Roman emperor. Basically, almost every soldier wanted to be in the Praetorian Guard, just due to the fact that you were based in Rome. I mean, these guys were sitting and drinking wine. So, how much you want for this? For a piece like that, I think I'd like to get $15,000 for it. All right. Um... I mean, I think it's super cool, but I'm absolutely clueless on this. I've read about these in books, but I never saw a price. I don't know how to tell if they're real. Um, if you don't mind hanging out, I'm gonna call a guy who hopefully will know about this. And uh, I'll be right back. I'm totally fine with an expert coming in to authenticate and verify the diploma. I look forward to learning more about what it's worth and where it comes from. Hey, Dave, what's up? Hey, hi, Rick. How you doing, man? Doing good. Here is the diploma. Yeah. I had to run <laughs> when I heard about this. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really cool. Uh, you know, I've seen these in books. That's it. Right. There are a lot of different Roman inscriptions. The most, probably the most common surviving is from Roman military diplomas. They're usually fragmentary like this. So the original would have been larger like this, and then one similarly large piece, and they would have put been put together like a sandwich. And the idea was that they had the official inscription, which could be used to explain the terms of service and the fact that this person was now a citizen. OK. Has this one been studied? It has been studied. It was published in Roxana's uh, Roman military publication. OK. So if this one is, is published in that, that's a very good thing. OK. It's more complete than usual. Quite often, this is something this size is all that survives. So this is a relatively complete piece. He's, he served with Praetorian cohort, uh, which, of course, is very famous. They are among the more common uh, diplomas. There are perhaps 100 of them known in fragments and, and larger pieces. But these things are still rare. They're still very rare. OK, so what's it worth? It's very hard to put a precise value on an item like this. Um, being the two pieces relatively complete, I think $12,500 for a collector would be about right. OK. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, um, so what would you take for it? Well, I'd really like to get $15,000 for it. I think it's something that would perform really well at auction. I mean, I imagine this is a very specialized market, so I, I'd give you like six grand. I would consider taking less. How's 12500 Uh, no. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I, I have to resell. I have to make money. I mean, it's just the, the matter of business. I mean, I'll go like 6500 I think I, I think I paid more for that, so I, it might have to stay in my collection. OK, well, I guess the die is cast. <laughs> have a nice day. Thank you very much. For now, I'll keep the diploma in my collection until I find the right buyer. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. How you doing? 
So tell me what you got. So I was cleaning out my aunt's attic and came across these really weird old looking coins. They look rare. I've never seen anything like these. Okay. Do you know anything about them really? Yeah, I tried looking them up on the internet and I couldn't find anything about it. I just know they're well over three to 500 years old. I'm gonna go with they're probably a lot older than that. Hopefully for me and my wallet. <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today to sell two coins that I found in my aunt's attic. They look really old, really rare. I have no idea what their deal is. I hope somebody can tell me what they are. I'm hoping to get around 2,000 for the pair, just because I feel they're really old and collectible. This is interesting. I'm gonna go with Roman on these because you hear the, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It didn't fall in a day either. Once Christianity started taking hold, there was probably over a hundred different emperors or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to kind of make their mark. And there was all kinds of different coins that got created. Is that Jesus or an emperor? You know, that looks like it could be Jesus. Kind of looks like he has a cross behind him. But I'm not the expert on Jesus here. Me, me neither. Now, don't get your hopes up quite yet. Before I get ahead of myself at all, what are you looking to get for them? I'd love 2,000 for the pair. That's totally possible, but I have no clue. There's so many different variations, so many different things that come into play here. So do me a favor, hang out for a little bit. Let me call a buddy of mine to come take a look at them because these are two I've never seen before. Cool. All right, I'll be right back. I'm really hoping the expert comes and sees the coins and says they're thousands of years old and hopefully worth thousands of dollars. Oh, wow. I got a feeling that they may be Roman or something. Right. They're sort of Roman descendants, so they're Byzantine. But the Byzantines consider themselves Romans. OK. So tell me what I'm looking at here. Well, these, give or take 25 years, about 1,000 years old. These were struck for a little over a century, and only Christ's portrait appeared on these copper coins, which was really amazing because for the first thousand years, it was the portraits of emperors. And then suddenly in 970, the emperor, John I, decided to take his own portrait off of his copper coins. You know, I've had 2,000, 2,500-year-old coins come in the store that actually weren't worth anything. Right. So I'm, I'm always a little bit leery when it comes to stuff right, like this. Right, as you should be. Yeah, ancient coins, they're worth anywhere from 50 cents to several million dollars. So hopefully these are the ones that are actually worth money. Do you mind taking a look? Yeah, I'd love to. These are not bad. They have very clear portraits of Christ, and they were used for everyday commerce for just ordinary purchases so they get very worn. So to find them in this condition is not common. So that's really good news. So just give me an idea, what are they worth? Well, these are very pleasant examples. The portraits are extremely clear and that's why people want them. If the portrait's not clear, one or $30 each. If the portrait is unbelievable, maybe $1,000 each. And these fit very nicely in the middle. They're about $300 each, and they should sell very quickly. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming down. All right, thanks, always. So what are you looking to realistically get out of them? 300 each. <laughs> you know, 300 bucks, I might have to get them graded, encapsulated. All this stuff costs money. I got to pay somebody to sell them. I think 300 bucks for the pair. I'd really like to get at least two for each. I'll tell you what, I'll do 350 and split the difference with you. We got a deal? Yeah, we got a deal. Right over there, I got a red chip, okay? Thanks so much, appreciate it. Honestly, I think I made a pretty penny for two coins that were sitting in my aunt's attic, so it's a win. I have a Roman ancient bronze duck lamp. I'm almost afraid to touch it, really, man. The word ancient just scares me. <laughs> I don't want to be the one who breaks it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I purchased a duck lamp from an antiquities gallery in Manhattan's Upper East Side a couple years back. I'd like to sell the duck lamp because I want to add some new pieces to my collection with the money I would get from it. All right, so what exactly is this? This was a, a lamp used in ancient times, in the Roman culture, to light up a room, also possibly for ceremonial purposes. Yeah, I was going to say, um, 
It looks a little fancy to just be your average household lamp. I know these lamps are fairly common and every household, you know, had at least a couple lamps, maybe even one per person, because exactly. once the sun went down, this is what you would use to see. This is kind of slidable. If you move it gently, um, it reveals this opening. Uh, you put some olive oil in there. You just put the wick part into this little hole right here, and you just light it up. All right. I've seen my fair share of lamps at the shop, but nothing as fancy or ancient as this. The first century is really old, so I'm gonna need some help before I even think about making an offer. When you throw words out like ancient, yeah. it kind of scares me to ask you what you <laughs> want for it. Um, it is, it is really old and it has a fragileness to it, um, but I'd like to get $40,000 for it. <sighs> oh. If you want to get that kind of money on it, you're going to have to hang out here. I could call my buddy Phineas down. He specializes in artifacts. And... Perfect. Sounds great. All right, let me give him a call, and I'll be back. Awesome. I'm not nervous at all about the shop calling in an expert. I'm pretty confident that the piece is as described and authentic. Hey, chum. Hey, Phineas. Yes. Good. Really good to see you, brother. Well, I think you're going to be even happier when you see what I have here. Wow, that's a Roman lamp. Bear with me a second here and let me put something on so that I can actually pick this thing up. Wow, that is something else. Look at that. That looks to me like it might be a swan. Oh. And you know, yeah. in the ancient mythology, many times Zeus would take the form of a swan. These little caricatures that you have on the side here, uh, Chum, those are like little uh, cherubs. So almost like a Valentine's Day, you know, oh. have these little angels walking around, they're shooting people with arrows. Yeah. This would symbolize, let's say, like a good marriage. You've got yeah. the, the, the gods there that would encourage love, and um, this would be an object maybe, you know, placed on a bedside table. So how much do you think it's worth? He yeah. wants $40,000 for it. Ooh, it's a hard thing to gauge on items like this because when you go to the auctions, somebody could look at this and just fall in love with it and they're gonna bid you right up to 40,000. Other people are gonna look at this and they may say, well, I really don't like the caricatures on it and, and they might not bid on it at all. I'm going to pitch it right about $1,000 to $1,500. Well, that's what I need to know. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome, sir. And uh, take that glove off. You look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I will do that. Thank you. This is a really great item. I would love to have one. I would definitely buy it and add it to my personal collection. But at 40000 that seemed really steep to me. So I had to be somewhat of a dream buster today. Still want to sell it? Um, I mean, based on what the man just said, uh, what would you even offer for it? Out of curiosity. 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Um, it's a beautiful piece, it's nice, but $400 is what I see comfortable putting money into it. Um, so I'm gonna have to pass on your offer. All right, well, thanks for bringing it in, man. Absolutely. They obviously thought that this was an ugly duckling, but I know to me that this is a beautiful swan and it'll bring me a lot of cash someday. What do we got here? Got two items I think you might enjoy taking a look at. Two ancient Roman bronze statues. One of Hermes, one of Cupid. Okay. Odd looking chess pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today trying to sell two ancient Roman bronze statues. The two statues come from around 100 to 300 AD, and they were used mostly as a decorative item. I'm asking $3,000 for the pair of statues today. It's pretty cool. The Roman Empire was a highly sophisticated society. They were able to cast these small statues with amazing quality. After the Roman Empire fell, you wouldn't get this quality back till 1400s. So there was a thousand years where they couldn't even make anything with this quality. So in a Roman household, they would usually have like a little altar in the house and they would have a bunch of little statues like this, you know, depending on how much money you had was how nice the statues were. And um, this was an integral part of people's days. I mean, every morning and every night, they would go and talk to these guys. So Hermes, he was the messenger of the gods. He's the guy you pray to for business. So if I was back in the Roman days, this is the guy I'd be praying to mainly, okay? 
But I uh, saw this girl, and I'm head over heels in love, and I'm just too embarrassed to even talk to her. You know, I'd be praying to this guy left and right over here, Cupid. Cupid's wounds would infect you with love, and that's why I uh, had the bow and arrow. This is supposed to be uh, Hermes? Uh-huh. OK. You sure? He doesn't have any wings on his feet. Well, not Mercury. Hermes. All right, well, no. You see, I have to understand that the Romans, they just weren't really good at coming up with their own gods. So no matter what you call him, Hermes or Mercury, he should have wings on his feet because they basically took Greek gods, changed them around a little bit, and they became Roman gods. So what are you looking to do with them? I want to sell them, and I'm looking to get $3,000 for the pair. I think they're really great. Um, they're great shape, but I really have to have someone look at them. These things are faked all the time, and you can see how easy it would be to fake them. I got a buddy who's a complete expert on this and can tell us if they're real, what they're worth, everything about them. You just hang out like 15 minutes, I'll give him a call and get him down here. Thank you, yes. All right, I'll be right back. I just don't know about the Cupid one. Like, Cupid's messed with me my entire life. It's really sad. Bob! Rick, how you doing? Hey there. Hi there. Good. I see you brought the Martian gun. I'm ready to zap you. <laughs> I'll put that right there for right now. <laughs> so this young man has what he says is Hermes. I'm not sure on that one. And we all know Cupid. Ooh, yes, we do. This guy's gotten everybody in trouble. <laughs> so Roman Empire, huge. Gods everywhere. Everybody had little votives in their house. So not unusual to see these guys. But from here, they look beautiful. So I'm going to start with Hermes. Beautiful patina. Nice piece. Looks absolutely right, the gun will tell me. But let me look at uh, Cupid first. So Cupid is the Roman iteration of Eros. So as I'm looking at this, I see a couple of things I like. But then I see a few things that are a little bit funky. Well, that doesn't sound like good news. May not be. OK, zap him. OK. So back in the day, you were a metalsmith. You'd take whatever metal you could find, throw it in a pot, throw it into a mold. Out comes Hermes. So we're looking to see if they have any modern elements in them. So I have the answer. Tell me the good news. Hermes, bronze base, about 50% lead, 50% copper. And that's how it would have been made back in antiquity. Great. Cupid, not OK. I'm saying nickel and bismuth. Those are two modern elements that you would not find in Roman bronzes. All right. So we know what this is worth. <laughs> the big question, this guy right here. It's got some condition issues. It's been laying in the dirt for 2,000 years, so the fine details are gone. So based on what I'm seeing, 500 bucks. Bit of a disappointment. I really was expecting a bit more. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate Always a it. pleasure. All right. Um, unfortunately, that was a no-go, and um, Herbie's here, which is um, in decent shape, not great shape. It says worth 500 bucks. What do you want for it? Um, 450? 325? 425. I'll tell you what, I'll go, go 375. Maybe it'll help out business a little bit. If 400 will help out business, we'll do it. 375. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to make a lot of money off it. Understood. Uh, I think I'll keep it for that. You know what? If you change your mind, come back and see me. Thanks very much. All right. Well, I got no love today with the fake Cupid. But I'm not going to kill the messenger. I'm going to hold on to Hermes.